Hello once again from Vostok station. Right now I'm standing near the station's runway. The weather is beautiful today. There's hail around the sun. The sky is incredibly clear with almost no clouds. It's virtually no wind. and almost no one around. So today I would like to tell about the station's drilling rigs. Here they are. The old one to the right and the new one to the left. The old one was built in the around 70s, not long ago after the foundation of the station itself. It was used for drilling the ice cores for more than 20 years. Well, basically, what is an ice core? Ice core is a cylinder of ice. Its diameter is equal to the diameter of the drilling device, most commonly around 17 centimeters, and its length is about uh, one meter, or slightly more than three three feet. Um, the point of drilling the ice cores is to analyze them and to tell by the composition of the ice uh, what was our atmosphere and what were the features of our atmosphere of the atmosphere of our planet um, many thousands of years ago or even some million years ago and the point of drilling the ice cores here in the Antarctica is that I mean why does it make sense to make it here or not, for example, uh, in, the, in the North Polar region. Because the ice, uh, ice shield of the Antarctica is about 32 mi million years old, and the ice here never melts. It uh, moves, it has certain movement with, the, with, with a certain period of time, but it never truly melts especially here, on the South Geomagnetic Pole, on the Pole of Cold of our planet. And uh, the most interesting depth for drilling the ice course is from, two, is from uh, 3200 meters uh, down to 3600 meters. On that uh, depth you can get the ice core from the layer of ice that was, uh, I mean, that is, <laughs> that is uh, around one million years old. The oldest uh, ice that was, uh, that was uh, delivered using that drilling rig is about one million two hundred two thousand years old. Can you imagine that? One million, two thousand years old. Ah, sorry, one million, two hundred thousand years old. <laughs> sorry. Analyzing, analyzing those ice cores allows the glaciologists, the scientists who uh, study the features of the glaciers, of the ice layers of Antarctic ice shield to tell uh, quite a lot about the composition of the atmosphere of that period. And for example, uh, drilling the ice cores and analyzing the composition of the ice cores tells us that uh, global warming is not really it's not a myth. That's that's real thing, and that's uh, that's a real problem, and it has to uh, has to be dealt with. The temperature today is minus 31 Celsius. The atmospheric pressure is like. Uh, 4,000, oh sorry, 430 millimeter Hg. The, 
the humidity here is uh, always quite low. Today it was about, as I remember, uh, about 50%, so quite low. Well, and, and it has to be low because it's the coldest place on the planet. During, a, during our over, over, over winter here, in uh, June, as I remember on the 7th of June, the temperature was minus 82.1 Celsius. Well, that's really, really low temperature. Well, the lowest temperature on that station was recorded about 30 years ago. Uh, and that was minus 92, oh sorry, minus, uh, oh, well I should check, but it was like minus uh, 92 something. Uh, the, the station sits on the Arctic ice shield on the height of 3488 meters. But due to the fact that atmosphere is uh, slightly thinner on the uh, in the polar re uh, regions, the equivalent of height here, taking in consideration the atmospheric pressure, is like 4,200 meters. So we're like in the in the mountains here. Here is the road that was made by by our tr trucked vehicles, and it leads to the construction site of the new station. Because the station, the con the contemporary um, uh, status of the station is well quite worn worn off. It was built in early 80s and it's really old. The new station is about to be constructed right there in some years and it would be way more high-tech and way more ergonomic. So there you can see the runway the plane takes off in that direction and uh, there there it would land in, in like a week and it would take us I mean the wintering crew of the station would take us to the shore station progress where most of us would um, go I mean fly, well, where most of us uh, we have a flight to station Novolazarevskaya, from there to Cape Town, and from there to St. Petersburg. Well, I would uh, stay on the station progress, and would wait for the boat, for the scientific expeditionary vessel to be correct, named Akademik Fedorov. That would take me and the biomaterial, biosamples that I have with myself, that were collected during the overwinter, to St. Petersburg. It would take like four months to get uh, from Antarctica through all of the stations, I mean all of the Russian shore stations, for the exception of Belenzgausen. To Cape Town, then to Bremerhaven in Germany, and then to St. Petersburg. So four months at sea with a travel through the half of the hemisphere. Oh, sorry, I mean half, half of the of the world. <laughs> well, I would make some more videos 
where I'm still well, um, I'm still here. So I want to make uh, some videos about the history of the station, about the history of exploration of Antarctica, and about uh, certain personalities that were, shall I say, heroes for that continent, that deserved to be called heroes. Well, it's, I think that's it for today. Bye.